Well, as everyone knows, uh, we have a problem in our ranks with sexual assault, sexual harassment, so we still have lots of work to do. And uh, we, we have to do is continually assess and continue to adjust our training programs, uh, our culture that accepts uh, sexual harassment, and we also have to continue to work at our ability to investigate and then prosecute those who conduct sexual assault, sexual harassment. So we have a lot of work to do. Uh, we're, we're not where anywhere near where we want to be, and this could take a total army effort to get there. Well, first, obviously, it's about our, our training programs continue to be incorporated at the institutional and then, and then incorporated in the operational army. I want to see command climate surveys conducted, uh, mandatory command climate surveys at every level of command in order to judge, give the commanders an assessment of where the command climate is inside of their own specific unit. Uh, and in, a, in addition to that, I want to eliminate what I call the bystander mentality. Uh, those who watch and don't intervene in a sexual assault, sexual harassment scenario. So I think I want to go after all of those in 2012 and start to whittle away at shortfalls we have in those areas. Again, I think it's important uh, that there's many different ways you can report an incident. Uh, you can report it through your chain of command. We have, we have a phone uh, lines that you can use to call. We have helplines, uh, and we really want you to report this. And we will try to protect. We will protect you, uh, your the best we can, in order to ensure that we're able to move forward and and hold those accountable who've conducted uh, these incidents. We have developed programs and and training tools that are being dispersed to all commanders at all levels. And so it's, it's, it, it, they, are, they are very specific, they are very helpful, and that they, they have the ability to use these. So I feel confident that the, the resources that are available are consistent and will have the consistent theme. Uh, and then also, through my interaction with commanders at all levels, uh, I provide them my intent. My intent about the profession of arms and the impact that in our profession, behavior such as those who conduct sexual assault, sexual harassment, will not be tolerated. Behavior that does not have a command climate that, that uh, both male and females feel comfortable in reporting uh, crimes of sexual assault, sexual harassment. Uh, we must develop those climates that, that uh, make it easy and, 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 make it, and make people believe that when they report a crime, action will be taken. It's about, it's about soldiers taking care of soldiers. You know, I mean, we're, we're supposed to be there for each other all the time. Whether we're, we're fighting in Afghanistan or whether we're home, we have each other's backs. We have each other's uh, right and left, and we're there to help them. And we should never tolerate somebody else who is not living up to that standard. And so that's what I talk about the bystander, intervening and taking care of those who are not living up to our standards and reporting it through the chain of command and making sure that a sexual assault, sexual harassment does not occur. The best way to combat this problem is that every soldier takes it seriously and does not allow this to happen. Our business sometimes is life and death. Our business is we must depend on each other in order to accomplish our mission. And so we got to depend on each other in all environments, in all areas. And if you don't have an environment that is, that if you have an environment, environment that's tolerable of sexual harassment, sexual assault, then I believe it affects unit readiness, it affects unit capability, it affects the ability of, of soldiers to do their mission to the best of their abilities, and we can't tolerate that.